Hola. Hello. How's it going, bro? I'm uh, pretty good. How are you doing? Pretty damn good. Yeah, I need you to send me the replay so that I could have uh, control over the flow of them. Understandable. But you, <clears throat> but you want to work on mechanics, huh? Yeah. So what is leading you to the choice of wanting to work on mechanics? Curiosity. Um, kind of, I don't know, I'm just, I used to be a, like, huge one-trick for a character that wasn't very good, mm -hmm. uh, and I feel like that's caused my learning for the, like, some of the mechanics of the game to suffer over time, because I was only playing that hero, but I've started branching out over the past, like, I want to say month or two, and kind of been trying out new things, and so I'm trying to learn what I kind of didn't learn for some time. Well, that's fair. I'm gonna, warn, I'm gonna warn you though, we didn't, like, overall this was a really bad game for us, this first one. Yeah. The second game was much better. I picked one, like, basically one of each because, uh, I wanted, like, you know, to show, like, I wanted to get some tips on, like, coming back from behind and also, like, Already, I might even have some really good examples on coming back from behind in my own games here. Um, coming back from behind, it, so this game mechanics are great, but they are rewarded more in other MOBAs like League and Dota than they are in Heroes of the Storm. Heroes of the Storm actually rewards people who play the map better, kind of have to since it's a team based game. But there, I looked over these briefly. I like to zoom through games so I have a general idea of what's going to happen. Um, in this game, outside of the fact that your team did not macro very well and that's why you lost, you had uh, a personal flaw that's both in this game and in the Samuro game when it comes to your laning positioning. Um, that hurts you and actually gets you ganked twice and killed once here in the first couple minutes. So I wanted to go over it. Mm -hmm. So, your general understanding of Maltail is fine. You, you cleared the wave, you conserved mana, it was all good. There's nothing really to go over of, like, the play style for laning. He's a great laner, you did good. Now, especially on small maps like Spider Queen, it does not take long to get from mid to bottom, yeah? Mm hmm Which means that your positioning in lane needs to reflect that more than it does on large maps because you can never really account for when they're going to show up. So what I mean by this is see where you are now here? Mm -hmm. You're right in the middle of the lane. In fact, you're kind of hovering top. Well, they're not going to gank you from the siege giants, right? They're going to gank you coming down out of the little spider pit here. So hovering top in the lane instead of down towards the siege giants gives you less time to react to an incoming gank, right? Hmm. This is going to happen here in a little bit. I never actually thought about that. So, right, if you're, if you're just down a little more, it's not like you won't hit the minions, but, like, that extra inch or so down, right, that's an extra second. That's a little more time. That's a better angle, especially since you can just run all the way down and around if you need to, right, all the way down to that little chest. Mm -hmm. So this, that's... That's really all that hurts you. It does straight up get you killed later on. I have no problems with how you play the lane. Beyond that. So we're just going to try and zoom through. I think this is where Genji comes in a second. Can't remember exact timestamps. But yeah, see how you're way up here on the top side? Because mm -hmm. you're up here, right? He just dashes in. You're like, oh god, Genji. Right? Yeah. If we if we take a, a look back mm -hmm. here, I'll slow it down. You can see that he only was out of, out of vision for like a couple seconds. He's in here, but you kind of know he's mid. Then you step up ever so slightly. As far as you're concerned, he was on screen for like 0.5 seconds. You know what I mean? Mm -hmm. So. So if I had been like, mm -hmm. farther down, like, uh, it, I would have seen him from. Yeah, the you would have seen him. He dashed. From, yeah, before he dashed, you'd be like, "Oh snap! It's a Genji! Run!" Right, and you get time to book it out. And in mm -hmm. that manner, you uh. You're not gonna suddenly have to tap, lose half your health, and get get chunked on, right? Because mm -hmm. you got really chunked on, and that saves you a tap, saves you positioning, and allows you to keep pressure in the lane. It matters less on big maps because if you're really paying attention, you'll see them coming from like five miles away, and so you have more than enough time to back up. But on really small maps, it matters quite a lot. And you have to base because it's still little spiders. Nothing wrong with this. 
Where is the next thing? So, <clears throat> believe this is where you get ganked here in a second. I'd definitely kill you. And lose 20 ganked. gems. I remember this. Yeah, I would definitely kill you if I was in. So, I think this is the part where it happens. Blah, 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 blah. blah. Yeah, okay, cool. Cool, cool, cool. So, this is actually. It's actually easy to see and easy to avoid. Now, on top of positioning down, so where you're standing, right, this is, uh, I, I like to divide macro and in positioning into two things. Either there's, like, team fights or there's macro position. That's two different kinds. So they shouldn't have been be think, thought of as the same thing, but they're both an individual skill. So what you need to think in this situation is how much backup do I have, right? If you're stepping out anywhere to get soak or do anything aggressive at any point in the game, you need to have backup. You need to have the potential that your team is going to get there and turn the fight on them. So right now, you know for a fact that your team is back at nights, right? And that Mayev mm -hmm. is all the way in base. You know that. Mm -hmm. And you probably know that even extra because you're in comms with these guys, right? So yeah. when you're when you're sitting here, what you need to think is, I'm just going to sit on my horse. I don't even bother going out. It's not worth it. Because by going out, what you're what you're showing them, right? They should assume, since your team is missing, they're like, oh, they're probably doing right, knights, right? People can mm -hmm. make that process of elimination. They're going, oh, okay, they're probably doing knights because we don't see them anywhere. They're not up top. They're not down bottom. Okay. But then you show up. And by showing up, you are presenting them with an opportunity for a pick. You're saying, hey, I know that you know my team isn't here. I just wanted to let you know that I am. And you can totally kill me if you feel like it. <laughs> You're walking into a situation that's perfect for the enemy team. You never want to give the enemy team what they want to see. All right, so make sure that when you do step out, when you do move on the map, that not only are you giving yourself enough time to react by positioning smartly in the lane or with wherever you are around the curse around whatever point position smartly and then make sure that you're only taking these positions when your team is there to back you up especially the later the game goes when burst damage starts to really t come online if you step out you're just gone instantly mm -hmm. and that's the main problem particularly with teams down in here in like divisions e d and c is that people will just walk up to die all the time. And you'll notice it in your games. You'll start to see people who just walk out and start soaking a lane. And you're like, uh, why are you doing that? Yeah. Yeah. It's also a great way to make comeback. We'll cover that in a second. Let's get to the point where you are effectively very behind. If you have any questions, feel free to just throw them out there. Let's see. Blah, 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 blah. Team's doing poking. For some reason, they were 10 that entire time and didn't feel like just murdering everyone. Brilliant, brilliant teams down here. Um, all right. To the point where you are 10, I think your team tries to stop the turn in, but they get it anyway. And you yeah, your all turns in bot. Yeah, I... yeah, yeah. Can't really stop her. You try, doesn't happen. All right. Yeah, I didn't get there in time. So what I want you to look at right now is it, this is something that I, I'm actually working on with uh, all of my friends right now who are playing on off brand serial with me. So your mechanics so far in both games have been just fine. Your Samuro technically can go up, but that's only because Samuro's skill ceiling is so damn high that uh, <laughs> you can really push it to the limit on that character and become something special. But it does not matter how good your mechanics are if you're never in the right spot. Like, if you land every skill shot, and you dodge every spell, and you're so perfect, that's great. But if you're never at the fight, who cares, right? Mm -hmm. You don't get to use those mechanics. So you told me that you wanted to look at mechanics, but I went through these games and was like, you don't need to work on mechanics, at least not in these two Your mechanics are fine. You do all the things. You do all the things. You understand when it's best to cut your losses and run. You, you're, you play very smart. So I'm going to spend a little bit of this time going over some macro stuff. So that's why I'm harping on this. But yeah, I just uh, to let you know. I've actually I was playing solo lane in these games. Mm -hmm. I've actually been moving off of solo lane because we recruited a solo laner, but he couldn't play that night because uh, all enough. the NGS drama that's been going on. Well, uh, solo laner, not solo laner, doesn't matter. 
because this situation is universal. This is what I yeah. call counting the numbers. How many of them are in mid? Four. Oh, uh, three. Three. How many of your team is in mid? Four. And if you went mid, how many of your team would be in mid? Five. Who's going to win between a team of five and a team of three? A team of five, usually. Yeah, we, not, we would help. <laughs> we, we would help if <laughs> a team of five, right? Yeah. So you're coming down bottom lane. You're thinking, oh, I need to go soak. You don't come back without killing people. You don't in this game. You have to find your fight, your team's fight. You have to see it, and you have to go for it. And gumming down here, yeah, your team should have just, you know, fought 4v3, but they don't. But if you come in off the flank, that's three dead people. You have three dead people right there. Maev goes in with her little shadow thing, pulls them back, you come in, you crush Jaina, junk rat spam, you know, all those crazy things. These people die right here. So right here, you swing the game. But you don't swing the game because you don't come in on a flank. And without your flank, nothing's going to happen. Counting the numbers is all it comes down to. How many of them are there? How many of us are there? Are there more of us? Kill them. Is there less of us? Don't kill them. Right, coming down here is a wave of Zoko. Who cares? This is like a third of a kill. Let alone when you're behind, right? This is like a third of a kill and you're about to get three. This wave does not matter to you. Should not matter. So if you had gone up, you would have made a comeback. And you'll see there are plenty of instances in that in this game. We actually are looking for a scrim against people where we can purposefully throw four levels of practice making comebacks. So. Here, you can't really do anything. You have to fight the spider. We understand. Fighting spiders, fighting spiders, blah, 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 blah. And then your team should just all group mid. This this is terrible macro call team wide. There's no reason to not fight them five v five, and you get paid for it terribly by losing a keep because one of your people steps up and is very dumb. She's like, here here's a perfect example of how to not make a comeback. Remember that counting the numbers thing. How many of them are mid? How many of your team are mid? Three at the moment. All right, and what what does your your person do? Uh, I would go top. And <laughs> well, I, I mean, what, but your team, what do they do? Oh, in this uh, they step forward. Yeah, they're like, oh, baby, 3v5, time to make highlight real plays. No. <laughs> it's not, no highlight real plays to be had in this situation, right? If your team mm -hmm. had just stayed alive, or if all five of you went mid, there's a whole different story here. But this is a perfect example of how to continue to lose. Your team is walking into situations that are disadvantageous. Yeah? It's just the mm -hmm. numbers. And so they're gonna get a free key. Because you can't you can't fight 5v4. This is what I mean. There's not really much to go over in this game after this. But if you mm -hmm. count the numbers, you're gonna find your fight. And if you don't find your fight, then we can't grade your mechanics any further than, hey, you lane real good. Because you lane real good. Right? The one fight that you showed up to, two people died by the time you got there, so it's not even really worth going over. It's not a fight. It was like, oh, okay, I'm going to leave now. So let's go ahead and hop out of this game and go over the game that's much more interesting with a lot of mechanics a lot of fun. That's your Samuro game. I still felt it was good to go over the laning stuff. Do you have any questions over that first game? No, but I do want to say like that I had never thought about that on Spider Queen with the positioning you know, the, towards the bottom of the lane. To get, like, I never thought of that before. Well, hey, now you have. Somebody else thought of it for you. You're good. <laughs> I'm just, like, it'll help. Like, yeah. hearing that will probably help a lot, because we have issues on Spider Queen, actually, quite frequently. Well, Spider Queen is one of the hardest maps in the game, because the snowball is much harder than anything else, because of the way it's laid out and designed. Yeah, our two worst maps, really, are Spider Queen and Sky Temple, so... Yeah, snowballing maps, where it's you have to be... Uh, they are not very forgiving, unless you are really good at macro. Um, then that That's like a whole can of worms. My team has been working on that for weeks right now. We're trying to up everyone's macro game there. So, it's not even something we're going to touch on. I'm just trying to touch a little bit on personal macro decisions that you can make, mm -hmm. irregardless of whatever 
that will help your mechanic shine. Because I bet if you go for a couple more of those fights where you recognize, oh, guys, we have 5v3 men, and your team be like, oh, my God, it's so true. And then, you know, you kill everyone. I'll go, it'll go a long way. Bump, 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 bump. But this game is much better. So your Samuro is decent. You, uh, you do try and do some of the stuff some of the time, but you don't do all of the stuff all of the time. And if you ever get to the point where you're doing all of the stuff all of the time, you are going to really enjoy playing Samuro, which is abnormal I've, because I don't like I, I started playing him like a month or two ago, and mm -hmm. it's been really fun already. Uh, Ide recommended him to me, the person who's been playing our tank in this game. Yeah. Because I'm a big fan of Vikings. And... Oh, you're a Vikings guy. Why? Yeah. Yeah, all right. Fair enough. You can be one of those masters one tricks who only plays Vikings and makes their team cry every time it gets banned. Like, oh, God. God. Now, there are a couple of them up there. There's like three of them. And then they, they, everyone knows. And they'll just be like, you know, they're watching somebody else's stream. They're like, oh, they got the Vikings player bans Vikings. And then they try and play something else. And it's just like, oh, no. <laughs> You're only up here for one reason. <laughs> All right. So on this map, it doesn't matter as much if you're hovering on like up on the top or in the mid, right? Because you have a long time to react. It's a much bigger map. But uh, you guys go for a lane swap. I do like the fact that you tried to do the the crit stacking thing, where you go one, two, three, and then pop your things and try and get all the crits at once. That was really nice. Yeah. Smart play. I'm glad you know how to do that. So here, here's one of the things that you like to do a lot. You just like to step up. There's nothing you're going to do to these people. Right? You're Samuro. Level 2. Mm -hmm. Like, Samuro doesn't start popping off until later in the game when he has some levels and can hit really hard. Yeah. So you're going 1v2 and at one point 1v3, right? Mm -hmm. But you you keep stepping up. You're like, oh, baby. This, this is fine because dude's by himself. But you're like, I'm going to fight you. I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to fight you. And you keep stepping into them. You're like, like, watch. You'll run over this to get hit and then run away. I just wanted that globe, I think, at that moment. Yeah, but is globe worth, like, dying? No. No, and they really should have killed you. That was bad play by them. If, if it was, like, good Joe, she just slams you. Stukov walks up and two shots you because he hits, like, 300 damage in auto. It's, yeah, he hits, like, a fucking yeah, truck. Yeah, he hits, like, a truck. It's fucking unbelievable. But right there, I guarantee you, you were playing against my team, you would have died. Globes are not worth dying. Nothing is worth dying. Dying is bad. <laughs> So it's like, but you keep walking out there. So this is this has a little more to do with just understanding that, again, numbers. Like, you don't have to fight here. So what if they hit your towers? Right? You have a 3v1 bottom. Your team is doing the same thing. They've already got a tower. Who cares? If all this, all this health that you're taking is a tap that you don't have for the first curse now. Right? Mm hmm Or you're not healthy enough to go and get the siege. Or... Now you can't roam and gank if for some unknown reason that was required of you. Because you're at one-third health. And you're at one-third health because you keep walking into a disadvantageous numbers. That's all it is. Mm -hmm. It's like, oh, I'm 1v3. I better go get that jet, like, regen globe. Well, I'm 1v2. I need to take all of Gul'dan's purples, you know. Yeah. Just, just, just kick it, you know. You don't need to drink that purple drink. Just sit on your horse and kick it. Like, there, that was cheeky, but, you know, I don't really mind. Here, again, you're 1v3, and you're like, oh, here I come out the gate. There wasn't even a regen globe here. Look at this one. It was like, oh, baby. Gates are my friend, but not for, <laughs> not right now. You're like, ooh, cheeky globe. All right, what, what is out there that you can't get right now? You'll still get the EXP. Kills. You're not going to stop them hitting. Oh, yeah, you're going to get kills, man. Okay. No, right, you said that you can't get it, I thought. I heard what, that you can't get. Yeah, what, what can't you get from behind the gate? From behind the gate, I thought you meant like from in front of the gate. Like, so, you so if you, yeah, okay. Well, oh, I see what you mean. I see what you see, mean. Uh, word Must have playing. Yeah, that's fair enough. So, yeah, you can get killed in front of the gate. You can't get killed behind the gate. Both in front and behind the gate, you can get EXP. But you're like, oh, baby, here I come. <laughs> and then you get an extra chunk of health. There's nothing out there for you. You just kind of walk out. Don't do disadvantageous numbers. There's no, I can't say that more than like 30 times. So I, I think I've said it enough that, that you understand the point. Here, obviously, you're full health again, so this changes things entirely. You rotate. We're all happy here. Cool, cool, cool. Cool, cool, cool. You get some skulls. Not skulls. Why did I say skulls? I don't know why I said skulls. So here's a little thing. Don't tank the knights. 
You're going to take a lot of damage here. After you kill that little back one, run back out and let your clones take them. Right? You have clones for a reason. You go down to, like, half health doing this, and then, like, you either have to tap or you have to base. And you should never, like, lose any health as this character. One of the best uh, camp clears in the game. But you just, mm -hmm. you just sit there and, like, get smashed in the face over and over again by the knights. Like, look how much health you took. You should be at full. Mm -hmm. So that's just a little min-max. You don't need to have that one happen. But yeah, now you're at half health coming into this fight. You could have been at full mm -hmm. health going into this fight. And that gives you right full health. You have so many more opportunities, so many better things you can do at full health than at half. I mean, that's pretty obvious. I'm sure you knew that one. I don't know why I had to say it, but... <laughs> we can slow this down and go over the next fight. Ballstad's coming in. I hope you saw that, but depending on yeah. where your screen is, it's whatever. Now, let me ask you a question. What is your job in a fight as Sumero? I mean, I like to think I get on the back line and, like, get them low, but I don't know if that's the right answer. That is the right answer. Oh. Think about it this way. Characters can be rated in terms of threat, right? If they can kill you, they a threat, <laughs> right? Yeah. So this is like this is why people pick these big damage backline school damn false that Hanzo. You know, this is why you pick Samuro, you pick Cassie. You need to have threats. If you never kill them, you're not gonna have, have a really good time playing Heroes of the Storm, right? Mm -hmm. In the end, you really have to kill people to move forward with the game because they're gonna try and stop you from doing that otherwise. Now Samuro mm -hmm. is a threat character. He brings the deeps. Especially if you can walk into a fight with a crit prepped, right? Think about that. You have a crit prep, you walk in. You're about to walk in with, I think it's like a thousand damage bursts on one character. If you pop your your guys, crit, one, two, crit, all of your Press dudes, you, you, yeah, you, you basically win. That's it. You're done. And then you just win, walk away, and go, I kill one, ha 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 ha, unless you can come back in and do it again, right? Mm -hmm. So you are a total burst damage backline blow up character. So you definitely have that right. Which is why I was very curious that most of this game you spent hitting Johanna. And we'll see that as it happens. But Samuro, post post level 10, there are also lots of other fancy tricks that you can use that we'll go over here in a little bit of how to get to backliners better and how to really like work your character to that next level. Because you're doing mm -hmm. a little bit of it with regards to macro like controlling your stuff, but not in fights. And we'll go over that when we get there. But for now, like False Dad Lands, you can either just blow them up or you can win, walk away, and rap and blow someone up, right? That's all you're about. You're like, I'm going to get to a backliner, I'm going to hit him very hard, and then I'm going to run. And if I can't do that, I'm just going to run. That's all you got to do. Mm -hmm. do, 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 do. And there you go. You go right on all the backliners. It was great. Hurrah. We like this. I mean, you got that one person that got dragged by the Haka, like the Joel or Stukov, whatever it was. But in general, right, you went one, boom, straight to the backline, and that's fantastic. That was a great play. But right here... I think we decide to give this trouble up. Yeah, I you can't. do. I think I think you give this one up, which is fine because that's a nasty spot to fight for your confidence. Good call. Blah 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 blah. You come up here, and then you beat the crap out of him, and everyone's happy. Like your general, your general laning is fine. Oh my god, purples to the face. Hey, don't get hit by that. that was, don't don't get hit by that. <laughs> that's bad. It was like, oh my god, look at that majestic beauty. He's at like one fifth. You're super healthy. And then you're just like, one, two, three. And it's back to even. <laughs> I mean, oh. I can also cleanse off that dot, though. At, the at least you time, can cleanse off the dot. Of. Yeah. But you'd rather not get hit by stuff. If you're going to play damage characters in general, there's a rule of thumb for damage characters. It goes like this. Land all of my spells. Never get hit. Mm-hmm. And if you can get that, then you're off the flipping chain. Obviously, that's a lot easier said than done. You're going to get hit sometimes. You just are. It's going to happen. But that's what you should strive for. So when you see the purples, you click S. Just stop. Let them run out in front of you. Move to the side. Right? Cut the angle. If you get hit by one, you get hit by one. But don't get hit by all three. Uh, so I have a question. What's the difference between pressing S and, like, pressing... I think H is the other uh, key to uh, So H... It, this is, like, goes back to uh, the StarCraft, WarCraft stuff. S used to be that if you hit stop, your character would still, like, they'd, like, stop for a moment, and then they'd still be prepared to attack if, like, something else came into their vision. And H was like, no, you're going to stand right here, and you're not going to do anything. In this okay. game, there really isn't a difference. But it was built on the StarCraft engine, so it's still kind of there. But yeah. it's, it's negligible. You don't really have to worry about it. Okay. 
I was just curious because I know they both do something similar. Mm -hmm. Fair enough. You got any questions so far or you want to keep going? Uh, I don't really have questions, I don't think. Sounds good. Well, let's keep it going then. So you're up to 10. Now you do have generally good clone control when it comes to macro. Whoop. We're going to go back. I, I forgot I was supposed to mention this one. All right. But this is something awesome, and I really wish you had done it. If you create clones, especially since you have clone control, you can base one of your clones, keep the other clone out on the map, and keep some Uro out on the map where you're still soaking. And then your clone will, will, when it gets to base, you swap with that clone in the base, and then you can swap back out to your guy on the map. I didn't know you could do that. Yeah, I didn't know either until I watched Grubby's Samuro thing, and I was like, oh my god, that's sick. So, <laughs> like, and you can mount the clones. I didn't know you could Yeah, them. I didn't know you, you could Arthur them either. Sam. That blew my mind. I was like, oh, that's so good. <laughs> if you were seeing all of his clones on the map disappear, so I assumed it would be something similar to nope. Hearth. You can heart them, and then you swap, and swap back out when you full heal. And there you go, and then you just make a new set, send them wherever. Huh. Yeah, isn't that cool? I thought that was dope. I saw that, I was like, oh man. <laughs> that's some nice stuff. It's pretty cool. Alright, you find Joe, you hit her. But, why are you chasing Joe? What, you stunned Joe? Samuro's right there. Know. You have a clone on him too? Oh, you get stunned. You could have juked this done. Ah! Okay. We gotta look again. Again, you even said it yourself. I think my job is to hit the backliner. And you're presented with this. You have a choice between. Here's, here's Joe. The Joe Hanzo. and Hanzo. So, if your job is to hit the backliner. Which one are you picking? Oh, I should be picking Hanzo. You should be picking Hanzo. I no. don't know why I picked Joe there. No one does. <laughs> so, so mistakes happen. <laughs> what matters is that you learn from them and and fix your play. So here, and you, if you wanted to, you could totally outplay me and be like, okay, I'm going to go for the Joe until Hanzo shoots his arrow, and then I'm going to swap with a clone and send me flight. I'll oh, kill him. And then never be like, oh, what a Samara player this guy's got here. But you did neither. So, uh, this is why I said, like, this is why I asked you how you wanted to play Samuro. You had the right answer, but you failed to execute the right answer. Mm -hmm. Still get the boss, right? And it still works out for you, but your team could have done that. It could have been cleaner, could have been better, could have been nicer, right? Mm -hmm. And cleaner is like, that's faster. That's you faster to the next play. That's you faster to getting a fort. That's you faster to being able to soak more, right? If you do the right thing, everything will fall in place and you'll just get more and more and more and more ahead. If you do the mm -hmm. wrong thing, it, while it might still work, it's not going to, like, reward you with as much EXP or as much time on the map or whatever have you. Mm -hmm. So here's another thing. Just in general, uh, split off your team if you're going this ult because you can just come back over to your clones. Mm -hmm. Right? There's no reason for you to be here right now. You could be getting w these two towers in mid and then just swap over when mm -hmm. they need you. So this is this is another opportunity for you to get even more, but you gotta you gotta get that Viking skill in there. You want to get as much as possible. Blah, blah blah. Here I like the fact that you break the small wall. It's a good goal. Space for this character is great stuff. So here we're gonna slow this down again. We're gonna take a look. All right, right here. What do you think is a good play for you? Uh, well, the f the keep is technically not able to hit anything, right. so I could probably just jump past the silence pool, jump onto the Gul'dan, and have Ka uh, Johanna have to choose between saving her Gul'dan and boarding off the rest of my team. Right. And but you I have a clone up, so you could keep one clone on the outside to swap out if you get in trouble, right? Mm-hmm. So that's an option. And you do... Nothing. Nothing. And you're on Johanna again! <laughs> <laughs> you're like, oh man, I see it. I just have to do this. And then you just go into the wrong thing again. So you know it's there. You can see it. You just gotta do it. Right? If you're yeah, on Gul'dan okay. when he's half health, and if he starts to, like, suck you dry or Johanna turns on you, just flip your clone and go, ha 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 ha. Can't touch me, I am mean, and they're gonna be like, Man, I hate the world, it's broke character, and then you win the game. Right? That could have been a free <laughs> kill on Gul'dan. Now, she gets tongued and out of position, so beating her down now is completely fine. This is all great. Hooray. And you get knocked back. Then immediately, you still have the chance of going back in. You still got 12 seconds. 
So of course your Dahaka digs away, because that makes sense. Uh, Yikes. yeah, we told him not to, but he was like, I'm already doing it, and I can't cancel it, so. He well, doesn't right, play uh, Dahaka. That, well, it wasn't the best choice, but it's been made, and another <laughs> saying that I have is... Let's work with what Work is happened. what has already happened, yes. It does not matter what mistakes approach you, you should always still be able to play a perfect game with regards to the situation. If your team runs away, that means you also have to run away, right? You're just like, mm -hmm. you may not have wanted to. It might not have been the most valuable decision, but it is your fault if you choose to stay and die now that Dahaka has left, right? Technically, yeah, you would rather Dahaka stays. But if you die after it's already happened, it's already in the past, you can't control him, you can't control anything else, you can only control your character. So if you mess up from this point with regards to the situation, it's on you. And mm -hmm. if you think about the game like that, you'll always improve. Regardless, whoops, I meant to press P or press B because I'm good at this game. Good at them replays, blah, 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 blah. And you hit the Joe, and the Joe's like, haha. And then you're like, okay, here's a free keep. But your Dahaka's is like, why get a keep when you can get a fort? And you're like, hey, that doesn't make really good sense. But does anyway. And team goes deep, falls that Gus, and they get a run. And we out of here. Fall in. All of the circles again. Yep. But tanking all the circles when you're going to run and heal anyway doesn't really mean anything. Here again, you could have done that. Uh, clone base thing, mm -hmm. but you don't clone base. You regular I base. No, I could do that. Yeah, well, I mean, since you since you don't know, I can't fault you, right? Like, ah, uh, now you know, I can fault you because you should do it every time. Yeah. Nothing wrong with not knowing. All right, so here we go. Next fight here. Oh yeah, you and all your clones. All right, so the trick to Samuro to be really, 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 really ultra good at Samuro is before a fight comes, so we know there's about to be a fight here, right? Mm -hmm. We know that they're going to stop you on boss. What else mm -hmm. do they have to do? What are they going to do? Get knights? Probably not. They're probably going to come for you on boss. Mm -hmm. You can preemptively spread your clones and put them in flanking positions. Mm -hmm. right? So like if right now you made clones, or in a little bit you made clones, you can put one over by where the hawk is in this little arch down here by the trees. You can send mm -hmm. one just down to just above the night camps or something like this. Right? There are places where you can send your clones to preemptively, so that by, especially now that you see them coming, right? Mm -hmm. Split and send your clones. Get mm -hmm. them to a backliner, because if they are already at the backliner, swap in. Boom, mm -hmm. you're right where you want to be in the fight. This is the big thing that I'd say you need to work on, is get your clones to the backliner, because if they turn on you, you just win, walk, and run, right? Like, all right, mm -hmm. whatever. But they have to respect you. We'll see right? them, because poison will get me out of win, walk, but yeah. Wow. Well, Within reason. And you can always dodge or time your go in around his purples or go on Hanzo or go on Stukov, mm -hmm. right? You have choices here. You don't have to go on Gul'dan and get poison. Yeah. Especially so now he's just used his poison. You see that purple run of the boss? Mm -hmm. So now you know that if you go on Gul'dan, he doesn't even have poison. He can't get you out of Winnemal. Right? So if you had had your clone in position over here with Dahaka, you and Dahaka are right on top of all their carries. You're going to beat the crap out of them. Mm -hmm. And then they have to run. You have just, like, caused their entire back line to leave. At which point you can just, like, collapse and kill Stukov and Johanna, who would be in the middle of your team. Mm -hmm. Right? You would get a free win here. Preemptively position your clones. Instead, you just kind of run your clones at their front line. Kind of hard to see. Here's one goes down, who's right up here in front. I believe you turn on the Stukov in the back. Yeah, there you are. And that's great, right? That's a high-value target. We like this. And then you turn on another high-value target. So they presented themselves to you, but there's no reason to wait for them to make a mistake. The better mm -hmm. you get, the better the, the people you're going to play against are, right? They're not going to mm -hmm. just kill themselves to you because they think it's a good idea, right? They're, they're not going to dive bomb as Falstad, a gustless Falstad, onto a point. They're not going to walk on there as Tukov. They're no, like, that's just not going to happen. So you got rewarded by the other people being bad and not by you being good, and that's a big mm -hmm. difference, right? You yeah. want to do it so that it's like, I have done this, I have made this happen, I, I did this on purpose. Because even if you do something on purpose and it turns out to be a complete and utter failure of an idea, you know that you meant to do that, and that therefore you can conclusively say, oh, that's a bad idea. But if mm -hmm. you do something just kind of like, oh, it's a fight, got to fight him, and you're not actively doing what you want to do or using your character to its max potential, you're never going to know, oh, was that a good thing? I don't know if that was a good thing, or was that them? I don't know. And you're going to constantly be in this position of 
not knowing what you can improve on. So consciously make an effort to use your character to their max, and you're going to see yourself having a lot of benefits here. A lot of positive mm -hmm. benefits. But yeah, that was on their team killing themselves to you. See, here you do the... You start moving your, your characters and stuff. You have, like, number two going off here. So clearly you know some good Viking stuff. This is good. This is what I meant by you do some of the things some of the time and not all of the things all the time. You could do more macro control of your dudes. I like your vision. People really underrate vision in this game. I thought it was a really nice touch. So you, again, you, you've controlled your clones. You go for good calls. In fights, I would like to see you get your clones on backliners so that you can be on backliners. I'd mm -hmm. like to see you come to fight with a crit if you can. Like hit one, two, three, and then you save it up. If yeah, I try I try to do that whenever yeah. possible. It's just Yeah, you do. And here again, you're like, oh man, I'm stealth, time to kill Johanna. <laughs> this, this, this like the Achilles heel, you're like, I wanna kill somebody, and it's gonna be Johanna. The character with the blinds, that's Samuro's best target. <laughs> Because, like, you, you even sent them to the back line. Now, admittedly, this would be a terrible time to jump to them, so I don't advise it. Because, right, you'll jump into the middle of their team and probably explode. So I'm glad you don't do that one. But you just, like, start fighting Johanna and then take a bunch of damage. I would prefer to see, and this is very underrated. This is one of the things that my team does to really destroy people. Let them in. Let them in. Let then them you up the choke, around. and then yeah, you can go, go around like... and crush them. You're, you don't have like to face tank. them off. You don't have to po be here, right? Like, yeah, yeah. they want to stop you, but it's a lot easier to just kill them than it is to, like, continue to poke off and kind of do that. We could be hiding right here or something and mm -hmm. come, like, once they come in, yeah, just exactly. come around behind yeah. them. Right, but you, you come up. And, so, and now you've, like, used your, I think that's, like, an 18-second cooldown? Yeah, it's an 18-second yeah. cooldown. Spell, right? So now, mm -hmm. you're, now you are 18 seconds off of your really big power move. Mm -hmm. Right? That That is part of your big 1,000, 1,500 damage burst combo at this point in the game, and you've just, like, used it. And, it's gone. Mm -hmm. and now they're pushing in, you back up, and now you let them in, but you're letting them in without your talents, without a good flanking position. You've just had to use a bunch of spells... Right, if you were preemptively here and they get to this point where they're channeling, the hawk is up in two. Here we go, they're dead. They lose. They lose. You're right on top of Gudan, Stukov, Hanzo, Falstad in the back. Like you're right there. The hawk is coming in at that little bush right there. You see what I'm saying? Mm hmm And you just collapse and you absolutely destroy them. You're up sixteen, you're up two levels, you've got the positional advantage. You're right where you want to be for your character as a person like personally, and you've made that happen actively. Nothing wrong with making sure that you fight on your terms. That's a, that's a big one right there. Then you send him down, get a little push, whatever. You go do another boss. This is all good stuff. Do -do 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 -do. All right, and here you're gonna hit Johanna again. We don't need to go over that for the fifteenth time. You hit Johanna. It actually lost you the fight that time, by the way, because your whole team stacked up on Johanna, and their entire backline was like, "Ooh, sweet shooting gallery," and crushed you. That's why you lost that fight. Whereas if you had been on the backline splitting their intention, this would have been good. And here you go, do a wonderful swing. Don't kill more than one? Oh, you do kill more than one. All right, whatever. Who cares? It was great. It was good play. I thought it was fantastic. Good call. You try to get another kill. Didn't happen. Whatever. Life goes on. I think you go for boss here. This is all just like team-wide macro, so not going to focus on it. Blah, 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 blah. Free boss is great. Blah, 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 blah. All right, cool. And then you get a pick. Hey, look at that. I believe this is just where you push for the win. Yeah, it looks yeah, like it. Yeah, this looks like win territory. Yeah, so there's nothing else to go over in the back half of that game. So I guess in a little sum summation, make sure you're crit stacking. Go on the back line. You are, and you knew it yourself. Use your clones to position on the back line. Use your clones more in macro senses, right? You don't want to be with your team. Have a clone with your team. Swap to the clone when the fight starts. And make a new mm -hmm. set of clones. Use your clones to base. You use your clones to base, that's great. And it's always okay to take the fight on your terms. Look at what kind of stuff you have on your team. Go, ah, oh, my team's got this. I'm Samuro. I would rather see them step up so I can get on their back line, right? Because if you can't get on their back line, then your character's useless. That's mm -hmm. the whole point of the character. So if you One important can, thing you know, to note is you can only really keep a clone with them once you get to level 10, though. Well, once you get to 10, yeah. But, that you know, obviously yeah. don't try and control your clones pre-level 10. <laughs> that would be a little awkward. <laughs> but those are the big takeaways from that game.
Now you also it said, uh, yeah. Whenever, oh, I was just gonna say it hurts whenever I'm trying to swap it, but then I forget that the cooldown is like eight thirty seconds, seconds pre-level yeah. ten. Yeah, that's annoying. It's eight after level ten, isn't it? Yeah. Yeah. It's twenty-five before level ten, and it's just so painful. <laughs> All right, I, I have a question. So you also said that you were interested in finding other characters that you would enjoy playing. Yes. And I, I'm wondering, what is it about, say, Samuro, because you do seem to like this character, we talked about him a lot, that you really enjoy? Is it the invis? Is it the gank potential? Is it the globals? Do you like doing a lot of camps? Do you like the burst potential? Do you like chasing people? What 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 part of Samuro is what makes him fun to you? So... I guess the easiest way to say this is I come from, if you were to look at my profile, you, I come from a Gazlo murky TLB background. <laughs> <laughs> so you like to do the weird stuff. Yeah, um, I picked up recently, I started picking up like a month or two ago Thrall, Malthael, and Samuro mm -hmm. because they were, I um, thought Melee Assassins would be the closest to like Gazlo murky. Um, because I, I like getting in people's faces and kind of, like, doing a lot of damage and being able to get out. Because, like, Gazlo has Robo and Murky has his bubble. And right. I also like characters that have some sort of speed buff at some point. Like, Gazlo has Robo, Samuro has Wind Rock, Thrall has right. his E, Malthiel has on a pit horse, or the Fear of the Reaper at level 1. Right. Murky then... can get speed on his bubble. Now, I'm trying to think with what, what you're telling me here, some characters that you might enjoy playing. Um, a lot of the big get in their face. Oh, yeah. Like... That, oh, God, this could be so nice. She's finally going to be a playable character. She's actually going to be disgusting for people who are really good at her are going to just see things in team fights that are going to be mm -hmm. unbelievably nice. And the addition of Chrysalis will make her a real flipping character, thank God. Yeah. She needs that so badly right now, so I'm glad they're giving it to her. It's just the problem with Kerrigan is that she used to be, like, just outrageously broken. I don't know how long you've been playing. How long have you been um, playing? Since, like, right before the Gazzle rework to, like, to you, a year or two ago. Oh, okay. Where he got Robo ch completely changed. Work Fair enough. Yeah, I've been here since the second wave of keys in Alpha. Like, I was in right after the media people. I got super lucky. And so me and my friends have been, were, like, rotating on my account playing here as a storm for ages but like back in the day kerrigan's like pull combo was big enough to hit your whole team and it did mm. twice the damage and <laughs> there was also a talent at 13 called rewind which murden has at level 20 that reset all your cooldowns so she would go yeah. in full combo your team rewind full combo your team <laughs> and kill them. killed your team yeah she just straight up killed whole teams it was like ah, uh, hey that's a little broke please fix and uh, they fixed her right into the ground and then uh, she she was not not as much fun anymore, and they never really brought her back from that point. They're like, yeah, we just we're just gonna kill this character for a while, like and Chen. Uh, yeah, like Chen. Chen is like playable, but uh, oh yeah, that was another terrifying one. At one point, he's just like, look at my barrel, I'm gonna murder your face, and you're like, hey, this is not fun to play against. You also didn't play when uh, Zeratul and Medivh could steal boss. That was cancer. It used to be that you could void prison an entire team on top of their boss. Like, you would jump in, void prison the boss circle, and just walk in and stand there. And it would count you channeling inside of the bubble as Zeratul. All the rest of their team was just in prison there. Wait, so it doesn't do that anymore? Nope. I thought it still did that. Now, if you bubble and part of it is on top of the boss circle, you cannot stand on the bo boss circle and channel the boss. <laughs> yep. Anyway, Does it work with all works? Say what? Uh, yeah, it, wor it, it worked with all mercs that way back in the day. So people would just run around with Zeratul and steal all your hard work. And they're like, ha ha ha, this is <laughs> completely stupid. Uh, <laughs> let's see, characters that I would suggest. I would suggest Sonya. If you take, I tried uh, her. Uh, if you take the whale hard ulti, then you get a lot of speed buffs. And you can take uh, the uh, pole spear to have your getaway card if you want to go that route. Yeah, I used to play her a lot, but people, um, I'm not the best at, like, bruising. I, I, I like knowing how much time I have, like, that I can survive while, like, Sonya is 
kind of variable. And Fair enough. I don't know. It's weird. It's I used to play her like a lot before the rework, but since the rework, I haven't been able to get the hang of her since, even See, though she's like stronger than she used to be. Artanis does not go out at any point. He only goes in, so that's not a really good one. You might uh, enjoy Urel. Oh god, Urel. Uh, she's too clunky for me. Too I've clunky. tried her too. All yeah, right, she's, fair enough. I've tried uh, another one I've been trying out that I kind of like is Ragnaros. I was actually about to say I'm looking at Rag right now. Okay. And how are you liking Rag? You you enjoy him a lot or He's interesting. Like he he's different, but he's I feel like he's a little too squish, but I like I can get around that at the same time. You know, I would say you, you that, just have to um, learn to play to the character. Yeah, the the Fun yeah, less squish build is the Q build where you can just keep smacking him for health gains with your Q. Because uh, you, you can get cooldown reduction um, on that one. I kind of go... Uh, what I've been going is kind of a hybrid build between uh, Meteor and uh, the... So, like, level 1 and 7 are both Meteor talents, usually. Right. And 13 and 16 are the uh, lob, the wave, the circle talents. The E talents. Alright. The uh, Meteor usually, like, 4 is good against spell heavy teams. The E talents... I usually go uh, at 4. I usually go the regen globes quest. Blast echo into the blast wave. I think the other two options at 16 are just mathematically better than second blast wave. I just go that because I go the tempered wave. But if they go, if they yeah. are better, then you know I'd be. I I just don't actually know how to build him. So. Ragnaros is stunned. Well, it's been a long time. He used to be quite good. They had to keep nerfing him. At least he's still quite good right now. But he used to be like one of those top tier pick all the time kind of things. Mm -hmm. Like you see with like John and Murden, Deckard and stuff like that. The reason that. I like the second Blast Echo is because you can save one of your teammates and yourself, or you can yeah. really save yourself. Because you get speed boost for, the, both of for both of them. Yeah. No, I mean, as like really, a lot of talents are kind of. You can view talenting in general as kind of negligible in the end, because if you can play mechanically around what you have picked to an excellent level. That counts a lot more than picking all the right stuff all the time. Picking mm -hmm. all the right stuff all the time is like you play in the HGC and, and that's going to mean something. But all the way up until that point, as long as you pick something that you are comfortable and confident in and play to an excellent degree, that's going to mean just so much more. Just so much more. So just I'm... a little bit of a different kind of play style for Ragnaros there. Mm -hmm. I don't know, Samro. What's your opinion on his level 7s? Bit of curiosity. Uh, let's see here. Summons again. Burning blade critically strikes the Marrow Mirror fifty percent attack damage spell damage and blah 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 boring. Uh Kamaro's critically strike forty five percent uh eh, eh. crushing blow, uh crushing blow. I'm not sure if crushing blow triggers again on your mirror images, but since you're already a burst character, walking in with two crits instead of one is like aha. So Cause... The, the way I view that is, um, it does trigger again. Um, I usually actually take crushing blows just because I feel it's the weakest of all those talents. Uh, burning, I'm just giving my opinion on it mm -hmm. and then you can, like, tell me what's wrong about that if you feel any of that's wrong. Uh, burning blade is the, um, wave clear talent. So, like, if your yeah. team is lacking in wave clear. Uh, phantom blade is actually the burst talent because, uh, that's what you're saying with the Q, and then you you have a crit already stocked up. You press your Q, you hit somebody, and then you press your W and hit somebody again with a second crit, right? Yeah. And you deal a fuck ton of damage. That's the that's crushing blows. Thing. Done by, that's, no, that's done by Phantom Pain. Phantom yeah. Pain increases your... If you have both your clones out, Phantom yeah. Pain increases your crit damage from 50% bonus damage to 140% bonus damage. Uh, is that 140? And then... 45 plus 45, 90 plus 50. Oh, well, let's see. Otherwise, you're going 50-50. How much do your mirror images do of your base? Nine, nine at baseline. Nine baseline, but what percentage is that, do you know? Not very much. Not very much. Uh, yeah, it's like 10%, so they're doing it additionally. So I guess it's like 130 versus 140 double crits versus Phantom Pain. Um, yeah, so I guess technically Phantom Pain is uh, better than... Uh, the Wave Clear one, if your team is lacking Wave Clear and you pick Samura, I'd say you picked a bad draft. Um, 
so you shouldn't have to ever take that one. But yeah, just like if you're gonna play the character to its highest degree, then I would say that going for the biggest burst is what really matters. I love taking him with Jaina because I like taking uh, merciless strikes at sixteen, and that yeah. really ups your damage. Yeah, it's always nice to play those those kinds of compositions. That works great with uh, Rainer as well. So that's fun. Yeah. Let's see. I'm trying to think. Do you? Let's do that it doesn't really go out very much. Alarak might be a little too cheeky for your go. I've tried Alarak. I just he's a bit more range than. Yeah. L little more of a kind of cheeky play style. I don't think it fits what you're saying. Valera could be, but she's also garbage. I so. recently bought Zeratul, but I'm I haven't tried oh, him. So fun. And I tried out Illidan, but he's difficult. Weird. Yeah. Yeah. Illidan uh, was my big character back in the day. I used to do 24-hour Illidan streams, and uh. I was one of the two people who was the reason he got nerfed so hard. <laughs> Because I played a match against Evil Geniuses at the time, which was like E.G. Idra and who else was on that? Like, oh gosh, just a bunch of random people. I think Fan was on that one point. Now he plays the HGC still, I think. But mm -hmm. um, yeah, I went one v five and got a penta on them on Black Hearts Bay three different times in a wow. quick match game, and they were just seething. It was hilarious. And that was during one of my 24 hours. I was like, oh boy, it's GG, what's gonna happen? And I just absolutely smashed them, because Illidan used to be so broken, oh my god. It used to be that flipping over someone would disjoint anything in the game. So you couldn't get hit by anything while you were flipping. No one could knock you out of your da either of your dashes. And you got twice as much cooldown reduction per auto attack. So and, two seconds of a cooldown reduction? Yeah, it was, it was Jesus insane. Fuck. And then you had Metamorphosis gave you like 200 to, or like something, 200 like a percentage shield based on who you hit. So you would meta into their team, 1v5, just dive in, and you would come out with like more health than Murden and Avatar. And hmm. uh, be untouchable. And then you're like, ha 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 ha, this is fair and balanced. It wasn't. Um... <laughs> It's actually single-handedly won Heroes of the Dorm the first year for every team who picked Illidan won because he was completely unstoppable until they nerfed him. Now he's pretty good, but he takes a lot more finesse to play. Mm -hmm. uh, let's see. Yeah, he sucks in the blinds, in my yeah. opinion. Yeah. Blinds are pretty cancerous. I, I would like, say... At least Sam self cleanse his blinds, but... Fair enough. I would say that Ragmaev, Malthael, all are going to be the best ones for you, though. You can try Zeratul, but I think it'll be like Alarak, where it might be a bit too cheeky. Because mm -hmm. he's a lot more like in and out and out and in and in and out, and it's like a little more poppy. It's, it's, it, it could be, depending on how you feel, it might be similar to Samuro and getting on the back line and getting to do a lot of fun stuff. Mm -hmm. But the real trick to Zeratul is figuring out a good bubble. Um... If you still like underrated stuff, you can try D.Va. And she is actually pretty good. I used to play her a lot, but, like, nuclear option. Like, I know you're not supposed to go nuclear option, but that just seems so weird. Like, I don't know. There's so many weird things with D.Va. We, uh, we have a wonderful nuclear option comp that we're actually going to run, I think. What, was like, Lockdown? Skyarc. Uh, no, we're going to play basketball. Uh, <laughs> we're going what, what, what was it something along the lines of Garrosh, uh, D.Va and Zeratul and then we would void prison oh. their team and then throw oh the nuclear my God. option into the uh, void oh prison oh my god Please, <laughs> no, don't give me nightmares like that. <laughs> <laughs> something along those lines or, or some similar version uh, we thought scary. that'd be funny we're gonna pull it out against Skyark because we don't like Skyark Oh, yeah. what's wrong with them? Uh, in the first game, so if you thought your loss to our team was bad, uh, you didn't see our first games. Where Skyarc, we beat them so badly in game one. So they, they started off by saying, we're all diamonds, so, you know, like, we're here to have fun. Don't worry about it or anything. And then we slaughtered them. Slaughtered them. I called them the whole game long. I just, like, perfectly played them, and we destroyed them. They couldn't even get out of their base. Literally, they could not get out of their base without dying instantly. 
And uh, then they were so mad that in game two, Skyark started B-stepping his own teammates. Intentionally fed three times and used his fire breath on his own team in teamfights. And we're like, wow, nice. you're a classy guy. So we don't like them. So we're going to absolutely destroy them. When we run up against them, we're going to put out the core five that we play for HGC Opens. And we're just mm -hmm. going to drop them like a rock. So that's going to be Fair a lot enough. of fun. Yeah, that doesn't <laughs> sound like a very yeah. healthy team uh, dynamic. Yeah, that's kind of how we thought. We're like, it doesn't help. I think it was just, you know, added fuel to the fire of him starting off with, oh, we're so good because we're all diamond. How am I? Oh, yeah, well, half of us are masters, so... You know. How'd you guys even end up in Div D? I don't understand. Okay, uh, Hot Slogs is unreliable as hell. Uh, that's how we ended up in Div D. So none of us have put anything on Hot Slogs in years. And uh, most people who use that only put up their wins because they want to look good. And mm -hmm. so the Hot Slogs did a reset like a year ago, and all of us have just almost nothing but losses. So we look like we're absolutely terrible. And so mm. when they looked at our hot slogs to decide where to put us, they're like, oh man, these guys are terrible. They're, then they're clearly Div D, which we were, according to hot slogs. But uh, I've played pro. Uh, Andrew and I, Friesberg and I, have both coached Heroes of the Dorm for three years. Uh, he's been Masters. Alicite's been Masters. The other two are like low diamond, high plat. And then there are, there are a couple people, they were all like unranked before, so they weren't even ranked at all, and they only just recently got ranked at all, like high flat, low diamond in there. Um, and then the other two are like, while they're technically low elo, everyone trusts each other because we're all friends and have been for like years and years and years and years. So our shot calling goes off without a hitch all the time. So like if I say it, it happens, and it happens exactly how I say it because there's just like implicit trust which allows us to just run teams down because since I have years of like top tier shot calling experience, I can just manhandle all the teams down here, which is really unfair. It is, but that's how it is. Fair enough. Um, yeah, my team is like, I think our highest rank is gold four, and then the rest yeah. of us are like, I think our lowest rank is bronze too. Yeah. But now we're trying to like play really off meta stuff to give people a chance, but in the end it's just like it's just a little too destructive for what people handle. I mean, we got we took games off of top teams who are playing in like Storm Division when we played mm -hmm. them in like the HGC Open. Mm -hmm. And we that was before we had even sat down and learned anything. So that like I'm still I do coaching sessions with all of them and I try and teach them macro and how to shot call and understanding what goes into each level of macro and how to understand how to like not only play your own character like what we went over a little today but how to play your whole team's composition what is your purpose in that composition then taking that and going okay how do we play the enemy team's composition what are all of our options here and being able to do that and then on top of that just like learning every character and yada 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 so we hadn't even gone over that when we were taking games off the top teams and it's just like oh well, okay well, here's here's a question for you. Um, yeah, sure. It's not really related directly to the game, but so have you been part of many like heroes uh, communities and stuff? Uh, communities, not so much. No. Okay, because um, my team is kind of trying to turn Rainbow Spectrum into kind of a heroes community. We've been trying to do it for a few weeks now, since even before the NGS uh, uh right. drama. <laughs> Yeah, drama uh, <laughs> is a good way of putting that one. <laughs> um, so we're trying to make it like a legit community for heroes, and we just, I don't know, you seem to be knowledgeable about the heroes community, but I guess if you're not really, then that's Well, fine. I'm knowledgeable about the heroes game, not Fair so much enough. about the heroes community. So that's uh, yeah. that would be where my expertise lies. <laughs> Fair enough. <laughs> However, yeah, if you do end up making a Discord or whatever, be sure to Oh, we have a Discord. It's so just, I, I hop on. don't spam it everywhere because that feels rude well, to spam it places. Well, how are you going to build a community if you don't let people know it's there? True. You got. We're still, like, working on stuff. Actually, I'm planning on trying to run, like, tournaments and, like, mini tournaments and stuff, kind of nice. like a DJL's shit. Man, once that we sounds get... awesome. Yeah. Count me in. 
But that is it for our time today. So unless you have questions, yep. I'm going to head out. All right. Thank you for the tips and stuff. Yeah, no problem. I hope they help you. Yep. See you. Peace.